<laughs> I'm sorry, Mama. I'm sorry. I'm we'll look like Will Ferrell. Hi, everyone. <laughs> you know what time it is. Disclaimer. Yeah, yeah, we're doing this. Hi. <laughs> It's the Angry Grant Show, everybody. Angry Grant Show. Motherfuckers. <laughs> Why am I here? <laughs> just, that's the thing. If I was better at editing, I would just say like, put in that clip. I think it's from like a. I think it's from like Mass Effect. Just like, Why are we here? <laughs> just to suffer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Focus, Grant. Be a professional. Hi, everyone. It's me, Grant, the movie and TV guy. New phone, by the way. Um, hi everyone. Weirdly enough, that was not the highlight of my day. We are here to talk about a movie. It's Raised on Popular with Grant, everybody. I'm Grant, the movie and TV guy. We are here to talk about, uh, the film. Before we do, disclaimer. Again, this is a review of a bad movie. Not your religious beliefs, okay? Grant, you buried the lead, I know. Or you, you showed your hand, rather. I know. But. Oh, boy. You don't know the half of it. So. Paul's Promise, or as from what will hence now be called, uh, Talladega Nights 2, The Religious Guilt Trip of Ricky Bobby, <laughs> is directed and edited, and I believe written by Matthew Arethmar. Who I believe is probably a pastor and not an actual filmmaker by the basis of this. Um, it is a film. I guess we'll. First off, spoilers. This is going to be a spoiler review, as you probably predicted from my tone. Who, anyone who wants to know. Okay, so. Ryan O'Quinn, aka Will Ferrell's lost brother, along with that one dude I think from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Plays, um, Paul, or as many people as they call him, Paul. Uh, he is a guy who is apparently a racist, even though he doesn't do anything that's outwardly racist, at least, you know, other than maybe the minorest of microaggressions. He doesn't, he's not violent, he doesn't act strange around people who are different from him, really. He doesn't, why is this guy considered, I don't know. Because it's it was civil rights, uh, I don't know why the civil rights era is used as a prop in this. By the way, by characters who seem to not like Malcolm X and also seem to not like Martin Luther King for some reason, even though he was, especially Martin Luther King is like is a goddamn American hero, but and world hero, but whatever. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, he's a guy who apparently. He needs to find God, or so he's told. He's guilt tripped. His mother has cancer. She's dying. He had an abusive background. And every single person in this guy's life tells him that he is... The fact that he likes a beer now and again with dinner, but he's not an alcoholic. The fact that he is a little grumpy. And just not smiling all the time, but is otherwise pretty genial. And other than the fact that he also especially doesn't go to church, or specifically his mother's uber, uber evangelical church, that means he is just like his father, who was a spousal abuser, who beat his mother and him. Okay, movie. Fuck you, but okay. Um... And he has to redeem himself, I guess, but it, there's nothing really to redeem, and, um... Fuck the plot. Okay, so. <laughs> I'm torn on this movie in how to score this because, and I need to choose the words very carefully. First off, I need to point this out, and I know this should just be a given. Anyone who knows me knows I am a relatively liberal guy. I'm relatively, I'm very progressive in my values. I need people to understand this because some people genuinely don't believe this, and that's really what's destroying this country is that Racism is bad. It is. Absolutely. Every form of it. Okay? I say that because I am going to be joking about a movie that is taking a lot of serious issues very seriously, but is doing it the absolutely wrong way. So I need to just justify the fact that illness, racism, and religious faith and that kind of change of heart 
are not a laughing matter, but they're also not to be used this way, and I'll explain why. This is more of an explanation for why this movie sucks than it really is a review. This movie is really offensive, but at the same time, I almost can't hate it because it's so funny. It is so unintentionally hilarious, and the biggest reason, one of the biggest reasons for that is Ryan O'Quinn. I, Ryan O'Quinn, if you're watching this, and you may very well be considering how low rent this movie is, I love you, sir. Because Ryan, Ryan, I almost said Ryan O'Neill, Jesus. Although, he hasn't always been the best actor either, but <laughs> Ryan O'Connell, Ryan O'Connell, god damn it, Ryan O'Quinn, sorry, Ryan O'Quinn, it's the lost sibling, older sibling of Billy Eilish and Phineas, yeah, okay. No, Ryan O'Quinn is the spitting image of Will Ferrell. And when he emotes in this movie, I'm not kidding you, he's such a bad actor that it looks like when he's trying to be sincere. You know that scene in Anchorman, that hilarious scene where he thinks that J Jack Black punts Baxter off the, <laughs> the bridge because he throws a burrito in his face out the car window and he's in a glass case of emotion while Paul Rudd is yelling at him that they're going to put Veronica Corningstone on the air? That is this guy's acting when he's being sincere. It is so over the top, and he looks like Will Ferrell, and when he scrunches his face up, and then he's also doing a really fake, fakey southern accent, so it sounds like he's playing Ricky Bobby. It's, I, I texted my brother about, like, 20 minutes into this. I said, I'm on his bad movie, he goes, what's it like? And he goes, dude, the main character in this, I love him. He goes, why? If the movie's bad. He goes, because he's like... If Will Ferrell and Morgan Spurlock had a baby who grew up to be a Hank Hill impersonator, look, like it's so bad. But this character, he's really not, doesn't, at least doesn't, on the paper, he's not a great, not a great guy or anything, but he's not like a bad guy. I mean, okay, he gets a little grumpy at his kids because they're running around and causing trouble, but it's not like, he's not like, you bastard! It's like, it's more like, it's more like, now come on now, calm down. It's, like, literally that tone of voice. Or, you know, oh, come on now, go go play inside, or something like that. It's not, like, mean or anything, or aggressive. He doesn't do anything bad to his wife. His wife constantly yells at him and berates him. Everyone in his life does just about. His mom, his mom's friend. His mom's friend especially is really obnoxious, because she's constantly, like, kicking him awake. Like, getting really physical and saying, like, ah, oh, you need to go to church for your mom. By the end of it, his own mother constantly is telling him you're just like your dad or variations on you're just like your dad like, you mean the guy who hit you no he's not <sighs> there are flashbacks in this movie where there is domestic abuse going on that's hilarious not because it's domestic abuse of course because that's horrible 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 that's one of the worst kinds of evil you can commit but it's because of how it's done the acting is so bad and the way it's shot and the way it's edited the opening production loads of this movie look like they were they were put together on like a Windows 95. <laughs> the movie is the stock footage in this looks like the stock like the transition look, looks like you got them from Shutterstock for the first hour, and then in the last half hour there's an assembly shot of their house, and I swear to you, it actually looks like I think it was CGI. I really do, it, and it, but like CGI like. The video for Money for Nothing looks slightly better than this. Like, it looks kind of like, you know what it kind of looks like? In Cool Cat Saves the Kids, when he's going to Dreamland and they have that animation of that thing, that's the establishing shot of the house. Like, they just gave up on even having stock footage an hour in. It's that cheap. The movie, and there's also, the stock footage has fuzz on it. It looks barely projected at all. It, and my the projections on the theater are actually really good. So it just, it's, it's, I don't even blame them. I blame the film because it just looks terrible. This movie, the ending of this movie is so false and awful and just gross. The, the woman is on her deathbed. Of course, she looks like she's glowing, basically. And he, at this point throughout the whole thing, he's not a bad guy. He just doesn't want to be a religious person. He believe even he doesn't even not believe in God. He just doesn't want to be as religious as his Bible thumping mom or her friends or his wife. And because of that, 
he's made to feel like such a piece of shit that when his mother is dying, all she can focus on is, you're like, save his soul, Lord, save his soul. And then he comes into the house. She's comatose at this point. He holds her hand and says, basically, through Bob, you know, Ricky Bobby seeing tears, overacting the hell out of it, going, I believe in God now, Mama, and I'm going to spend the rest of my life doing nothing but nothing for myself and only for him. And only then does her hand kind of clasp his one last time, and she slowly sinks away into death. Suck my dick, movie. <laughs> like, seriously, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be that gross about it, but seriously. That's fucked up. That's not okay. <laughs> Especially because the guy didn't do anything wrong. The guy's not a bad person. The closest thing he gets to actual, like, guess racism... The other thing... I could make a whole 30-minute video about this. All this is... One of his co-workers is a racist. And an ugly racist. But he's... To say this guy's performance is cartoony is an insult to cartoons. Like, he is... He's, he's made to look overweight, hairy... He kind of looks a bit like the dude who plays Kevin on Kevin Can Fuck Himself. Although I know it's not him because that guy can actually act in the part he's playing where there's a moment where there's like a confrontation between the two of them for, because the guy claimed basically, and the guy retaliates and it's so over the top. He's like, you're going to get it. it that, that's like, you're going to get it. That is literally how he says it. All the, all the, the few African American characters that are in this, really the, the friend character, the guy's all right, but he's like, he, he's not giving a good performance. The guy, the character's fine. I guess. But the thing is, is that he's portrayed as kind of stereotypically saintly. Like that magical, you know, token black person thing. And it's it's just really offensive. And he also, in one moment, claims, he says, we shouldn't be doing, you know, we should be doing what Malcolm or Martin says. He goes, we shouldn't be doing what Malcolm and Martin does. We should be doing what Jesus does. What? And then in, like, the next scene, he's quoting Martin Luther King. Like, he does one of the best quotes for Martin Luther King that he ever did, which is, you know, darkness can't shut out darkness, only light can. That speech. As a prayer with his wife. What the fuck? What is... What's your character? What do you assume? This movie... We don't have enough time. We gotta do trailer trash. This movie... You know what? Yeah. Zero stars. It just gets worse the more I think about it. Terrible. All right. Nothing more to say. Zero stars. Sorry for Talladega Nights to the religious guilt trip of Ricky Bobby. Just go away. All right. Trailer chest. Let's go through these pretty quick. There's one in particular I really want to focus on. Salvatore, shoemaker of dreams. This is a documentary about uh, a famous um, shoe designer directed by Luca Guadagnino. So look, ooh, Luca Guadagnino. I like him. Um, yeah, it looks good. Uh, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. Talked about it looks good. I want to dance to somebody. Talked about it looks good. The Fable Men's talked about it looks good. Strange World talked about it looks good. Till we're seeing it Thursday. Talked about it looks good. Last one is one they did as part of the movie again, and that is Bringing Back Christmas, which is the worst and most inept looking trailer I have ever seen for a movie. And it has the wife, the mom, formerly the mom from Good Luck Charlie, who's now the anti the poster child of celebrity anti maskers, who is from Family Camp. She's in this. I'm gonna... It actually looks kind of great. It's like a time travel Christmas movie. It looks terrible. Anyway, in was there from it? Yeah, there was like photos of the real guy. Whatever. All right. I promise you, I don't hate religious people. I just don't like religious movies very often because they're not often good. Anyway, that's it. Uh, we're done. And we are going... We will be back tomorrow for VHS 99. That'll all be next time. And until next time, I'm Greg, the movie and TV guy. I see it all. I'm happy to share it with you. I love you all. I appreciate you all. Love you all. Class is missed. I love you 3,000. Be kind to one another. If you like this move, if you like this video, rather, give me a like. If you want to give me a subscribe, if you want to give me the bell, I don't know what it does. That's supposed to do. Or so I've been told. One of my also reviews this and other fun stuff. You can check me out on Letterboxd.com, Facebook, my podcast, Serialized Raisin Popcorn. You can also leave a comment, even if it's just, like waffles. It really helps out. Now, I want to know down below, what did you think of Paul's Promise? Did you like the movie? Did you hate the movie? Think my opinion's good? Think I'm full of shit? I know you're going to think I'm the devil. Um, comment below, let me know. And until we meet again, we were all raised on popcorn. Make my other extra butter. Catch you guys next time. Bye.